Hi, I'm Chad Walkwist. I'm an architect at Palantir. Today, I got Will from Boundless Discovery. Thanks for joining me, Will. Thanks, Chad. Happy to be here. So maybe you could give a little description of what is Boundless Discovery? What does it mean? What are you guys doing? Um, and we'll jump in from there. So we started on this idea that navigating the information landscape today is hard and getting harder. Uh, both my co-founder and I, Peter, are very curious about the world, very interested in all world events uh, that are going on and you know what that means for the development of technology, economics, geopolitics. And we're finding it you know really hard to go and, and, and navigate that for ourselves and construct our own understanding. So uh, after you know some some discussion, some iteration, we decided to start a company. Uh, with the express goal of building what we're now calling the truth stack. We're trying to figure out what is happening in the world. How do we discern what is real, what is narrative and fake, and how do we then take that and present it to a user in a way that is uh, trusted, digestible, and, and accurate. So like, I guess maybe, you know, so we can, uh, the people watching can understand, like, how did you get started? I think some of this is fun because it was you and I on, on Twitter, if I give it away a little bit, but maybe how you guys got started with Palantir and then like, what's been the transformation you've seen as you started to use it? So th this idea of, of kind of doing analytics on world events is something that I've had, you know, kind of as an on and off side project for the last maybe eight years or so. And the most recent time that I picked it up was... Around when you and I started having a, a bit of a back and forth on Twitter, and it was also the first time I had picked the project up since LOMs had become a thing, you know, before I was doing all the yeah. older school NLP techniques. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a go again now, now that LOMs are a thing. And then one day, I forget exactly, you know, which, which post we were having this discussion on, but I was talking about how I wanted to model these world events and stuff as, as a graph. And you said, oh, you know, this, the, the ontology is kind of what you need for that. So, oh, okay, you know, I, I know the word ontology, but I didn't know what it meant in yep. terms of Palantir software. Uh, and then, you know, discovered the the free developer tier of Palantir. So when, you know, signed up for that, did a bunch of tutorials, and then I was like, oh, okay, now we can we can really go fast uh, with some of this stuff. So a couple of weeks into that is when uh, my co-founder Peter and I said, okay, we're, we're, we're doing a company uh, around this, and we're going to build <laughs> as much as we can on pa the Palantir platform. Yeah. So I guess, you know, okay, so you tried out the software, you, you, you downloaded, you know, you signed up for the dev tier, you started building, like, you said the ontology, like, okay, there's graph, like, from your perspective, I would love to hear it, because I've got my take on what the ontology is from, from you, like, what was the power of the ontology that, like, was the differentiator that had that unlock? So, you know, w when I started saying I want to model world events in this, in this sort of graphical format, um, what I, what I didn't realize I needed to do was very carefully define a couple of different objects and the links between those objects in a way that, that really captures as much of base reality as possible, but in a way that is also kind of cons consumable. So after, you know, a bunch of iteration and stuff like that, we kind of settled on, on three really important, uh, node types or ontology objects in, in, in the parlance yep. of, of Palantir's platform. And those, those kind of object types are entities, events, and figures. Entities, of course, person, place, thing, company, government, organization, um, an event we try to describe as, uh, an entity having done something, you know, Chad and Will had a conversation. This is very, very, yep. very, uh, you know, a verb happened. Um, yep. And then a figure, which is, you know, a, a, a different kind of piece of information. Ch Chad is an architect at Palantir. Not really, not really an event, but it's a piece of information that can, that, that can relate to different entities. So yeah. we, we kind of started defining that, like building that ontology, that data structure that underlies everything. And then building tools around, you know, okay, how we how can we go out and get data? How can we parse it down into this ontology? And then how can we visualize it, explore it, and use that to develop our own understanding of something that is happening in the world, some topic? Yeah, I think I think that's so cool. Like, because uh, I, I talk about it, the ontology is like it's the digital twin of your business process, 
the fact that you're like you intuited honestly without me saying anything of like that it, the, i'm building the ground truth of like how do i describe how the world is working and you came up with these different object types and and like I, that's the same thing we're doing whether it's like a supply chain issue or it's on the battlefield um it's pretty cool that you intuited down to like these are the nouns and verbs of how like the world works like i need to model that in a way i, I guess okay so you did that like then what is it, what did that do for you? That was different. Like the, that it unlocked, like what it, what did it allow you to go do? So I guess I'll, st I'll start by talking about the, the first kind of thing that we as yeah. balanced discovery, the company are putting out into the world. And right now that is, that is a news publication. We're just trying to kind of create these analyses on important topics. We go deep on them and we try to help you understand them. Uh, so how does one go and kind of create an analysis on some complicated topic that's happening in the world, whether it's Arctic geopolitics or, you know, the, the strategy that China is taking, going and building all these ports in Africa to get critical minerals out of the continent. Um, and without the technology that we're building, you know, you can go and do a bunch of Google searches. You can read articles on your own. You can maybe do some perplexity and chat GBT questions. Yep. But we find all these tools are, are these like really disparate things. And it's like, how do you, how do you sort of gradually build up your understanding of one of these topics? So we are using LMs to read news articles and other sources like that. We're then ontologizing it into the ontology that I just described a minute ago. We're visualizing all of this uh, currently in a vertex graph in uh, in like our own custom workshop app that we've that we've built in Foundry. Uh, more to come on that later. We're we're, we're trying to go the yep. OSDK route uh, yep. forward. Uh, but then you know the, the, we find the process of building that that graph for a specific topic, a specific uh, you know event, really levels up our understanding of it. So, you know, after yes. Peter or I have spent a couple hours going through and saying, okay, well, this connects to this and this connects to that. And then, oh, that gave me an idea for another question. So I should go out and find some more information about that and like build out this uh, little tendril of the graph. You know, the process of going and doing that, we find you end up with this, this really deep understanding of, of something. So the game yeah. now is really like, okay, we, we need to make this research tooling really streamlined really fast so that we can produce these analyses as quickly as possible okay now um you know there's just you <laughs> and peter at the company and so like how are you then thinking about palantir as like a scaling mechanism for you like or how are you planning kind of the next steps of your business in using palantir to like help you scale i mean a lot of it comes down to the fact that we have not raised any money yep. yet anyways uh we're, we're fully bootstrapped um, so I think that, you know, the, the, the age of, of kind of solo builders where, you know, Peter, Peter's the CEO, he's, he's handling a lot of the, the business development and a lot of the writing of these analyses. And I'm the CTO working on all the, like the whole tech stack I have been able to accomplish like a lot using the, the mixture of, of AI development tools, but then also more importantly, Palantir. I mean, I'm, I'm reminded of, uh, of, of the talk that, uh, Sean gave at DevCon one that you were so kind yep. to, to invite Peter and I to, uh, where he was talking about when, when AWS was coming around, it was this, this thing where engineers were sometimes feeling like, oh, but I like racking servers. I like having that control over it. You know, it was like some of my pride is kind of tied to the ability to like, at the end of the day, say, yeah, well, pat the server on top and say, I, 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 I did this. And Palantir is now doing the same thing with backend development where, you know, I could have gone and learned how to use databases by hand, quote unquote, to yeah. go and, and, and develop like a similar sort of data structure to what I have in the Palantir ontology right now. But why? Like, I'm I'm less interested in in writing code and being an engineer than I am in shipping a product that does something actually in the world that I view as a good thing. Uh, so yeah. I just want to speed as quickly towards that as I possibly can. And this this yeah. is that's this cool. is the way, yeah. way to do it right now. Yeah, if it's not in production, it's not in value. Absolutely. Right? 
<laughs> so, okay. I wanted to like switch topics a little bit. Maybe, you know, is there, is there part of this platform and stuff that you wanted to show off? So this is the application that I've been working on for about the last two weeks. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going fast here. Um, yep. Where I am trying to make it so that we can deliver the news experience in, in, a, in a way that is custom. So our most, our most recent analysis, the link between critical mineral dependence and threats to allies. This is running on uh, local hosts here. So you're seeing kind of, that's the editor that I've, that I've incorporated in there. Uh, but nice. yeah, now, now we're seeing the, the actual uh, new, news reading experience. So you'll, you'll have, you have this on the left. Uh, you'll be able to continue asking questions here on the right. Um, you can do something like highlight this, add it to the chat, find more sources that corroborate this information. You're oh, going to wow. go out and do some searching. Okay. That's cool. So you're, you're going to go out and start to understand. So these are tools that you can uh, not like, you can understand the providence of it. You can understand, the, is this like reliable pieces or what other things build off this piece of information? So you're, this is like, we talked about it. You're building that like understanding process, essentially. The whole understanding process. Like if you, if you see something in here that you think, yeah, like you want to know more about it, or you think, Gosh, that seems a little weird. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really expect that. We want to enable you to go and investigate further as quickly and easily as possible. So you see so this, this is just so everyone like watching this can see this. So like this is Vertex inside of like a custom workshop app that you built so that you guys can explore like the ontology, different elements that you're looking at to build these analysis, right? Yeah, that's right. We've got a bunch of custom tools in here as well for, you know, going and searching around to find out you know, w what is connected to this. So something like Gazprom is going to be connected yep. to a lot of different events and, and, and figures because it's a very large company. So let's see if there's, there's anything else in here that it's been connected to. Yeah. See, I did a search, custom search around to find a few other events oh. that Gazprom is, uh, involved in and yeah, but I think that the power of the the search around and the custom functions of like it can be a semantic search, it can be just search on the links, it can be any of those kind of things that are are somewhat loosely connected. And I think mm -hmm. that's the part that's important here is sometimes there's stronger and weaker connections that you're trying to find and analyze. But essentially, you're cr like this is the graph of the ground truth related to this topic. Yeah, without having any experience building front end, back end like user facing software, I can come in with Contier and say, okay, well, you know, here's, here's my ontology, like my data layer. Here's all of these tools that I can slot in place on top of the data layer to then go and interact with the data, update it, do it, analytics on it. And then the, the kind of visualization and workshop layer, uh, being able to quickly throw together user interfaces without really knowing how to do that. Awesome. Well, thanks, Will, for taking the time today. This has been awesome. I hope everyone else can see kind of, hey, you don't have to be a massive company to build in Palantir. Absolutely. Thanks, Chad.